Are you looking for a simple way to illustrate database components and their relationships? If so, this tutorial on entity relationship diagrams is just what you need. Hey, Doc Squad, Dr. White here with the Business Analysis Doctor. Today, I'm giving a tutorial on entity relationship diagrams or ERDs. But before we get started, if you want more high value business analysis training and tips, be sure to subscribe to the page and turn on the notification bell. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Entity relationship diagrams, or ERDs, are generally used to design relational databases. A database is a structured collection of data used to store and retrieve it. By visually representing the database, ERDs make it easier to understand how the different elements relate to one another. Now let's look at what you'll learn. First, we'll discuss what an entity relationship diagram is. Then we'll talk about entity relationship diagram notations, the main components of an entity relationship diagram, the different levels of abstraction. Then we'll discuss ERD rules and best practices. And finally, we'll look at an example of an entity relationship diagram using a library book circulation. What is an entity relationship diagram? It's a data model that illustrates how domain specific entities relate to each other within a system. It is also a visual representation of database tables, columns, and their relationships. Entity relationship diagrams are used to establish and communicate a consistent vocabulary, illustrate business rules related to a domain, define data requirements for an information system, provide details about stakeholders, objects, or concepts, and to plan and set up databases that store relational data. The entity relationship diagram can be illustrated with a number of notation styles. The best notation depends on the preference of the creator or whatever documentation standards set by the organization or team. Some of the most common notations include the Chen notation, UML, and crow's foot. Since crow's foot is widely used and tends to be more intuitive, I'll be using this notation throughout the remainder of the lesson. Now let's look at the main components of the entity relationship diagram. This includes entities, attributes, relationships, and cardinality. An entity represents nouns that can be physical, organizational, abstract, or an event. In most cases, this will be a person, object, or a concept. Entities are the key components of a domain that the business wants to capture, store, or produce information for. All entities within the model are tracked and have a relationship to other entities. When determining the entities that should be included in the ERD, you can use the noun technique. Here, you can review specifications, a glossary, or business rules for a specific domain or system, and then extract all of the nouns that are relevant to the project. The entity symbol includes the entity name and the entity description. The content that's housed within the description changes based on the ERD's level of abstraction, which we'll discuss later in the lesson. When naming entities, the label should always be written as nouns. For example, book. The next ERD component is attributes. Attributes represent the characteristics or properties that identify and describe the entity, including allowable values and the type of information that should be tracked and stored. Attributes at the logical ERD level are written in a simple, business-friendly language using terminology that is familiar to the stakeholders. Attributes in the physical ERD will be written in a database compatible format. Common attributes may include items such as name, types, location specifications, et cetera. For example, if the entity is a book, attributes might include the book ID, title, author, or reserve status. Now let's discuss the primary key. A primary key is a unique identifier that distinguishes one instance of an entity from every other entity. 
An entity can only have one primary key, which will never change or be null. No two entities can have the same primary key. In the example here, the book ID is used as the primary key instead of the title or ISBN because no two books can have the same book ID, while it is possible for two books to have the same title or ISBN number. Primary keys can be indicated in a number of ways, depending on the notation. A common indicator is to have the marker PK next to the primary key. Also, the primary key should always be listed above other attributes. Now, let's look at foreign keys. A foreign key is the primary key of another or foreign entity that is used as an attribute. When the attributes of another entity are also relevant to a specific entity, instead of duplicating all of the attributes from the other entity, the entity can just reference the primary key of the outside entity in the form of a foreign key. For example, if the reservation entity wants to identify the book details associated with the reservation, it would just reference the primary key from the book entity. Here, the book ID, which is the book's primary key, will transition into a foreign key. Foreign keys should always be listed under the entity's primary key and should be accompanied by the marker FK. While an entity can only have one primary key, it can have multiple foreign keys. Also, foreign keys can be repeated in a table. Another common approach to documenting primary and foreign keys in the crow's foot notation is by adding a column to indicate the key types. Now let's discuss ERD relationships. Relationships are verbs that describe how entities interact with or are associated with other entities. Relationships are represented as lines that connect the various entities to one another. The relationship between two entities is bidirectional. For example, a book may require a reservation in order to borrow it from the library. And the reservation includes the borrowed book. With no book, there's nothing to reserve. Now let's move on to cardinality. That's what the circle and stick-like notations at the end of the relationship lines are. Cardinality is bidirectional and should be sensical from both directions. To clarify, when discussing the cardinality, we describe the cardinality markers furthest away from an origin entity. The entity that touches the markers can be referred to as the target entity. For example, a book can have no reservation or it can have many reservations. Here, the book is the origin entity. The reservation is the target, and we're discussing the cardinality from the book perspective. From the opposite perspective, all reservations can only be associated with a single book, which is indicated by the one and only one notation here. When discussing the opposite end of the relationship, the reservation becomes the origin entity while the book is the target entity. In general, cardinality indicates the number of minimum and maximum occurrences allowed on each side of the entity relationship. Typical values are zero, one, and many. Cardinality may be represented using several different notations. See the crow's foot notation here. First is the one-to-one -one relationship. In this situation, the origin entity has a one-to-one -one association with the target entity. This is a many notation. In this relationship, a target entity can be related to the origin many times. Next is one and only one. In this notation, the origin entity has only one target entity associated with it. This also indicates that the one entity is required for the existence of the other. Zero to one means the origin entity can either have no associated entities or up to one target entity associated with it. Notations that begin with zero generally indicate that the relationship is optional. One or many means the origin entity can have one or many linked target entities associated with it. Then the zero to many represents that the target entity can be associated with the origin entity any number of times from zero on up. This is another optional relationship. 
Now let's discuss the level of abstractions for the ERD. An entity relationship diagram is a progressive data model that moves through three main stages, including conceptual, logical, and physical. These evolving stages enable the model to bridge the communication gap between the business and the technical team. From a business analyst perspective, the conceptual data model is used to define the scope, key entities, and relationships in a way that is easy for the business to confirm and understand. Then the BA works with the business to define the business rules that govern the entity relationships from a quantitative perspective. Also, additional details are provided about the entities. This creates the logical model, which provides a simple visual for the development team to understand. Lastly, the development team elaborates upon the logical model with database specifications to transform the model into a blueprint for building and implementing the database. The formatting of the physical ERD may be too technical to share with business stakeholders, so it's best to use it as a tool to communicate amongst the technical team. Now let's look at each level of abstraction a little closer. The conceptual entity relationship diagram is the highest level view of the model, which contains little detail and shows the overall scope of the ERD model from the business perspective. This level of modeling establishes the entities, their relationships, and defines consistent terminology of the business information. Some key characteristics of the conceptual ERD includes that it's business vocabulary focus, and it includes abstract information. From a feature perspective, it includes entities and a description, as well as relationships. The logical ERD contains mid-level detail. At this level, attributes are introduced and operational, transactional, and business rules are defined. This level defines the structure of the data elements and the relationships between them. Logical ERDs are associated with the solution design, but not the implementation. The characteristics of the logical ERD relationships are as follows. It's business rule focused. It also uses business terminology. Here, attributes, primary keys, foreign keys, and cardinality are all introduced at this level. The logical ERD is database agnostic, but a data modeling tool is often used to create them. Now we have the physical ERD. It shows enough detail for developers to build the physical organization of a database. Physical ERDs facilitate implementation of the model and illustrate non-functional requirements such as performance, concurrency, and security. Some of the characteristics of the physical ERD include being implementation focused, and at this level, entity names become table names and attribute names become column names. This level has more technical language and the naming becomes database compatible and database specific. At the physical level, data types are also introduced. All right, before we look at our example, let's take a look at some of the rules and best practices for creating effective entity relationship diagrams. First, entities must be clearly named as nouns. Next, entities must not be duplicated in the diagram. Any duplicate entities need to be consolidated with the appropriate relationships to the other entities. Entities must not be applications or systems. While systems may be used as a means to track and store information, information about the system itself is often irrelevant to the business. Every entity and attribute on the diagram must be named. Attribute names must be unique and easy to understand. Attributes for ERDs at the logical level should be terms that the business is familiar with. Also, different entities should not share the same attribute. Primary keys must be unique to only one entity. All entities should have a primary key. Also, entities cannot share a primary key. Primary keys must be listed at the top of or above the attribute list. Relationships amongst the entities should be vetted to ensure that they are not repetitive. 
Now let's look at an example entity relationship diagram using a library book circulation process as our case study. Now in most cases, ERDs are driven by business rules. Business rules are statements that constrain or regulate business decision making in order to help the company achieve its goals. So the business rules driving our case study include the following. Reservations may be needed for high demand books. Borrowers can reserve up to five books at a time. Borrowers can check out up to 10 books at a time. Checkouts can be renewed up to five times. And the renewal count for each book resets every year. Now we'll use the noun technique to determine what our entity should be. Here, we're able to pull out five nouns to be used as our entities. These include reservations, books, borrowers, checkout, and renewal. Now we've identified the five nouns out of our business rules to use as entities. We'll make the assumption that we've worked with the appropriate stakeholders to determine the appropriate attributes that need to be tracked and stored for the initiative that we're working on. For this example, we'll be looking at an ERD at the logical level, since this is where business rules and attributes are introduced. To transform this model to a physical diagram, the developer or data analyst could link the entity and attribute names to the database rows and columns that associate with the term. Now, for the book entity, the attributes are book ID, which is our primary key, then there's title, author, and reserve status. For reservation, we have the reservation ID as their primary key. And here, we want to know all of the details about the book and borrower involved in the reservation. So we'll include the primary keys from those entities as foreign keys in this entity. And we also have the reservation date and redeem date as attributes. Now we have the borrower entity. The primary key here is the borrower ID. We also have first name, last name, address, and total fees due as attributes. For checkout, we have a checkout ID as our primary key. Again, we need to know all of the borrower and book details associated with the checkout, so we'll pull in the primary keys for those elements as foreign keys. Then we need to know the checkout date, return date, and any late fees. Our last entity is the checkout renewal. The primary key here is the renewal ID. And of course, we need all of the checkout information, so we'll pull out the checkout ID as the foreign key. The other attributes include the renewal count, and the renewal date. Now let's look at our relationships. For the book reservation relationship, a single book can have no reservations or can have several reservations over time. However, each reservation can be tied to only one book. Next is the reservation borrower relationship. Here, a reservation can have only one borrower attached to it. However, a single borrower can have up to five reservations, which means that if the borrower wanted to reserve five books, there would need to be five separate reservations created based on the rules from the book reservation relationship. Now let's look at the borrower checkout relationship. Based on our business rule, we know that a single borrower can check out up to 10 books at a time. In some cases, an individual can be a borrower of a reservation instead of doing a checkout. So because you don't have to do a checkout in order to be considered a borrower, we'll use the zero to many notation instead of the one to many notation. This indicates that the checkout is optional for the borrower. Next is the checkout renewal relationship. Each checkout can be renewed up to five times, so the zero to many relationship will be appropriate. In the opposite direction, every renewal is tied to a single checkout so that each extension can be counted towards the five renewal limit. And finally, we have the renewal and book relationship. Because the renewal count for the specific book is reset every year, each renewal is also tied to a specific book, which is where we use the one and only one notation. On the opposite side, because we know that checkouts can be renewed up to five times and the book ID is an attribute of the checkout, 
A single book can have zero or multiple renewals associated with it. Well, folks, that's what you need to create clear and effective entity relationship diagrams. If you have any questions about the content, be sure to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, be sure to check out all of the business analysis and BA certification training and resources we have for you at thebadoc.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a productive and prosperous day, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.